if you've never been to Jamaica's south coast, you are in for a big surprise. With its savannas, cacti, acacia and rugged coastline, the place looks and feels very different from the rest of Jamaica. It has the most sunshine hours, best seafood and countless wild beaches, though back in the day it was hardly visited by any tourists. It all changed in 1990s with the launch of one small family business which took part in reshaping local community as well as Jamaican tourism industry as a whole. With this Jamaica video guide series, I'd like to share the story of the first boutique hotel in the south coast of Jamaica and the people behind it. I always wanted to come to Jake's and just never had the chance. Well, finally we're here. Aniki and I am the sales and marketing manager here at Jake's Hotel Villas and Spa. So I'll be taking you on a property tour of our lovely hotel. This is our restaurant. This is the Jake's Country Cuisine restaurant. Okay, in our pool and beach area. That's our world famous Dougie's Bar. You can get the best rum punch ever there. This is the map of Jake's property. As you enter, you will see the reception, the Jake's restaurant, and the saltwater swimming pool in the center. There is also a bar and seafront area that has a deck above the cliffs. My name is Jason, and I am the founder of Jake's along with my mother, Sally Hensel. And we're here in Treasure Beach, Jamaica, on the south coast in a little fishing village where my mother, who is a lover of Antoni Gaudi, her inspiration comes from all over the world. And she's really created a piece of art here. It's more than a hotel. It's um, a place that has heart and soul. It's family owned and operated. Our staff, who we call the Jake's family, are super friendly and loving and deliver warm customer service. We have rooms, we have cottages, and we have villas. So we have different room categories at Jake's, starting with Garden View. These are garden view accommodations here, just off the bar. All of the rooms in our collection are named after something in the sea. So these are seahorses up and down. We'll be taking you into quarry three, which is considered a deluxe garden view room. Jake's operates a total of 70 rooms, with 33 rooms on the main property and the others located in the cottages and villas nearby. No room is the same since each unit has a unique design. The rates for rooms vary significantly. The most affordable ones are garden view rooms from around 100 US dollars per night, depending on the season, and all the way to luxury four bedroom villas that go for around 1300 US dollars per night. This is a deluxe ocean view room. This is Cockles Down. Each unit in the collection has its own private outdoor space, as well as all the other things you would expect in a hotel, such as an AC, mini fridge, Wi-Fi and so on. Except that many units come with no TV. But then who needs one when you have this? Do you want to come here for our anniversary? Probably the best sunset you'll ever see. Oh yeah? It's very colorful. Um, 
beautiful. The property also has a nicely designed spa and yoga deck that offers stunning views of the Caribbean Sea. I must be honest with you guys, I don't like hotel reviews. Usually they're not interesting, and this is because they're either about some personal experience of a random guest that has nothing to do with what you're gonna get when, when you go there, or they're paid promotions, positive ones paid by hotel or negative ones paid by their competitors. What I find interesting is the story behind each of these places. And I can't wait to share the amazing story of Jake's with you. But first, if you're watching just to decide if Jake's is the right place for you to go, this chapter is designed for this. And unlike the usual hotel reviews, we're going to start with the negative sides. So Jake's is off the beaten track, right? It's two hours away from the airport. Um, some of the road is a little bit bumpy and curvy, so people People sometimes don't like that. Maybe we have a storm and the sea is, is, is rough for a few days, um, so they don't like that um, either. You know, between the rough sea and the, the long roads, it's not for everybody. And um, every now and then, you know, we get someone who turns up who that's not for them and we get some complaints and, you know, we work it out. I also found on TripAdvisor that people complained that there is no white sand beach. Which is true, south coast of Jamaica mostly has dark sand or black sand beaches. Some said that there is no beach at Jake's at all, which is partially true. There is no beach on the property itself, but there is one just outside of it within five minutes walk from the reception. Things that can be viewed as negative, I suppose. Loud music is coming on and off from the outside of the hotel, which is the kind of a thing you would experience in many areas in Jamaica. And you can see geckos, sometimes ants and flying things. When you live in rural Jamaica, this is something you get used to. But if you're from the city, just keep in mind, Jamaica is a tropical country. Luckily, nothing dangerous to humans. But if you eat snacks in bed in a tropical country, Ants will come after you, so be careful with what you do with your food. There was one complaint that I found quite strange though. It is that Jake's is right by the sea. It's a bad thing because the sound of the crashing waves can be annoying. It's not as crazy as it sounds. I've lived by the sea, it can be really loud, and I love it, but some people don't. So the suggestion here would be just go for garden view rooms, it's much quieter there. And there is one last thing I'd like to mention before we move on to positives, sea frost. How do you manage with the sea frost? Because it kills everything. It does, <laughs> and it's a daily task to keep up with it, but what are we gonna do? Mm. We wouldn't give up this view for anything. Exactly, exactly. So it's either you're enjoying the view and have a sea frost, or you don't have the view. <laughs> yeah, the sea frost. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not a good friend to us at all. But you know what? It adds up to the design. <laughs> That's what I said. It blends, it blends in. in. It blends in. Guests who stay with us love our staff. They love the fact that it's in a fishing village and a farming community where all the food is fresh. You see kids going to school on the road with their uniforms. On a Sunday, you see people dressed up in their nice pretty dresses and their hats going to church. Um, you know, it's a real living and breathing um, ecosystem for community life. We've stayed low density, so we haven't sold out, so to speak, to just being a resort area. We are not all-inclusive. That is completely counter to what we do. 
The location of Jake's is just perfect for those who love off-the-beaten-path travel. If you've been to other parts of Jamaica before, visiting Jake's and Treasure Beach community might feel like going to a different country because of the way it looks and feels. There are also a lot of things to do in the area that I will mention later in the video, but of course Jake's itself, as a boutique hotel, is an experience in its own right. So when we started out, we had no hot water, right? We had no air conditioning. Um, but you know, as travelers want more, expect more, um, we've, we've upgraded Jake's, where all of our rooms have hot water and air conditioning. We have very good wireless. Um, but it really is about, it's like an artist retreat. Every room is different and it's whimsical and it's bohemian and that is original, it's very unique. We have 15% locals, but since COVID, we probably have 80% locals. Um, so we're very, very fortunate to have always paid a lot of attention to our local clientele. And, um, you know, we have a really great reputation as being a small hotel and quite frankly, for being community leaders here in Treasure Beach. We're all about low density and sustainable travel, being responsible in your travel. That is our cornerstone. We're like a family, the Jake's family. And you know, when you stay here, you become part of that family. And you're, we're small enough that people remember your names, they remember what you like to eat and drink. So it really is like a home away from home. And it's something that we take very seriously and we're honored to do that. Originally, a funny story is that when we first started, these are the first two rooms uh -huh. that we had and then the restaurant, Jake's. And they were called Blue Room and Brown Room. Right. Clearly because of the we color. <laughs> but now they're called Coral and Conk. So it's like it's staying in the sea garden. I don't yeah. know. It's like what you, what you can call that. Yeah, the mystical sea garden. Right. Absolutely. Jake started off as a hobby for my mother. So when she started Jake's, it was just for friends and family and she built a few rooms. I was in investment banking because I wanted to be the opposite of my parents who were kind of creative persons. I wanted more stability in my life, so I became a banker. And then as life comes full circle, um, I came back to join my mom. My mother's name is Sally, Sally Hensel. Everybody calls her Miss Sally and she's the creative founder of Jake's and um, you know she's a very fun loving person she's 80 years old you would think that she's 40 years old um, she keeps me young she keeps everyone here around us young whenever we're taking ourselves too seriously she just does something silly to make us all laugh and you know she's really um, she is Jake's she is the foundation of it and um, we're really living through her whimsical ideas and dreams. Where is she? She's in Runaway Bay. I decided to drive to Runaway Bay to talk to Miss Sally and find out more about her, the family and how she came up with an idea to build Jake's. My name is Sally Hensel. I was born in Jamaica in the parish of Manchester in Mandeville, up in the cool hills of Mandeville. My parents were English, but we were born here, my sister and I. Treasure Beach was the nearest sea to Mandeville, and my father built a cottage there in 1941, which is the year I was born, and um, we still have it. And then uh, 50 years later, in 1991, the land that is, became Jake's came up for sale. And I was there and I bought it. Just four rooms and I thought I would make it another beach cottage for my family and myself. No further plans. And um, I was chopping it out of the bush with the help of two people a girl called Rima and a man called Bazi. And at the end of a day, it was so hot and so sunny and so 
full of prickles and broken glass and everything. And we went to the only bar in town uh, that had food and ordered dinner at eight o'clock. And at 11 o'clock, they said, we're terribly sorry, Miss Sally, but we've run out of food and we forgot about you. And, and that's why I made the restaurant. Um, I think I was born an artist. I can't remember a time when I haven't been making something with my hands. I, I, I don't do meetings because I, I have to, my hands have to keep busy all the time. And, you know, I started as a child. We made um, plasticine villages and dolls' houses and uh, paper doll clothes and uh, painting, of course, always painting. We had a little house in Kingston, and when Jason was born, we had to add into it. And I designed my first room onto a house. Perry, my husband, said, you know, I can see you having a career as an architect. And I said, you know, no, I mean, I'm not going to promote myself. When I bought Jake's, I built those two rooms, and then my son kept buying pieces of land. And as he bought the piece of land, I would see exactly what should be there. So I built it. I became an architect without having become an architect, you know. I love it and I love my team of, of workmen who, who make my creation uh, come to life, you know. It's like painting in 3D or, you know, to build a house. It's a, it's a wonderful feeling. Oh, so do you come here to study art? Um, sometimes. Um, <laughs> Miss Sally, she's the one that teaches us. And I didn't know this until I met her. Oh. <laughs> these are the painting brush. And these are the glitter paints. So you use and some of them? Yeah, yeah, I use some of these, actually. Uh -huh. And I use some papers, like, to color, and I use some of crayon and a marker to, like, do the stuff. So where is the signature of the artist? Uh, I didn't do that one. Oh, you need to put the signature on. Oh, you also did one. Oh, that's brilliant. Yes. What's your name? Kenneth James. Okay, excellent. Yeah, yeah, put the full name. Um, this is like I carry it to school like for the them to do stuff mm -hmm. and this Miss Sally O she mm -hmm. give us to do like a fun stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you. Look at that. What's your name? Britannia Clark. Okay, um, Britannia Clark. My name is Ryan Clark. Ryan Clark. Oh, so brother and sister? Yeah. And uh, you were? I'm the aunties for them to... Okay, I see. All right, I have some treasure to take with me. I joined my mother in 1995, okay. two years after she started the restaurant in 1993. Um, and together we have had such an incredible, you know, mother and son journey of um, her designing and building and me doing you know, everything with the marketing and the management and the accounting and all the things that she would see as boring. Um, my mother jokes and says that if it wasn't for me, no one would know about Jake's past Mandeville, which is about an hour away. So my mom is a real creative person. She's a photographer. She, she writes poetry. Um, she paints. She does murals. She creates these, these incredible little boxes that tell stories. So she's always doing something, fixing something. And she started Jake's on a shoestring of a budget with, with, with no money. And I think she had to make her, she had to use her mind to us how to use local material and working with local craftsmen. And in the beginning, they, um, they thought that she was maybe a little bit crazy because a lot of the walls are curved and, you know, it's very whimsical. She put broken tiles with mosaics and she put bottles in the wall and fretwork. So how did you come up with an idea to use, like did you go, oh, you know, these are broken things, I can use them? Oh how? yes, oh yes, broken things, that's me, that's me. Um, broken plates uh, or china or pottery went into the walls 
and then empty wine bottles went into the walls. There are quite a lot of the empty wine bottles. Where did they come from? Oh, people drank them conveniently. And then they always knew, oh, Mrs. Sally wants blue bottles. Anybody had blue bottles, say them for Sally. She could get lots of green and yellow from the bar, but she needs blue. <laughs> I have a couple of German friends who drink a lot of Sky vodka. <laughs> there you go. This is uh, for money. <gasps> oh! <laughs> That's the money one. So it like can be used as a... I, I hang it. You hang it, right. Yes. So it's either closed or open. What is it made of? Well, they're all, all cigar boxes. Okay, like, but, the, but, the, but the art stuff inside, well, what is it? Oh, whatever I can find. There's a bit of plastic, painting, shells. Okay. Okay. This is beautiful. Now then, here we go for Van Gogh. I found his ear on the beach. And that started me off. <gasps> and then, oh, and then wow. I, I no sooner found his ear than they discovered the gun that shot him in this field. And so I got the photograph. It's what, what did you, is it just dirt? Dirt, yes. That, as they would and have the found leaves. It. <gasps> I just grabbed some dirt and flung it down. It's a piece of coral. They, they, you know, I, I made lo lots of these boxes and there's usually something I find that starts me off. So like I have one in Treasure Beach that was, it looked like Michael Jackson's glove. Oh! <laughs> it was a piece of coral. And I have him holding a spliff. Oh. <laughs> if you visit Jake's now, there is a games room that has a part that looks like a little library with a very special atmosphere. If you look close enough, you will know that the flame of the most epic Jamaican feature film to date is kept right here. Over 50 years ago, another member of Hensel family, a young Jamaican film director, Perry Hensel, had to make a decision either to create his first film for local audience or for the rest of the world. As a passionate nationalist, he chose Jamaica. You make a film for an audience, not for everybody, for a particular audience. There is no impact you will ever have greater than the impact of showing a society itself on the screen for the first time. His iconic feature is called The Harder They Come, starring singer Jimmy Cliff, who is one of the reggae pioneers. The film was for Jamaicans using Jamaican language, music, cast and crew. The popularity of the film outside of Jamaica was limited at start, but it is the most internationally recognized Jamaican film and locally it was a sensation. The premiere took place in Kingston in 1972 and the audience came to see the film in record numbers. It was the first time when Jamaicans heard and saw themselves on the big screen. Well done, sister. Bus crash a port there, you know. Well on the driver, don't move. Look at your lovely mango from country, man. You have any more? Yeah. Taking this from my mother, you know. Put it up. Your husband was this absolutely incredible filmmaker who made the first ever Jamaican full feature film. I would love to hear, well, first, how it was, and second, how it was for you to be a wife of somebody who's always creating, while you yourself are a very creative person. Perry and I, <laughs> first of all, we called each other Rudy. That was the name. I called him and he called me. And then we had these children and he was involved so much in his world, you know, as a film director. He was a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant film director. And I only worked with him on the film as art director. 
But, you know, it, there was the writing, and then the producing, and the making, and the filming, and the editing, and the selling, and it went on and on. And he no sooner finished one film than he started another, and in between he wrote books. So here I am married to this brilliant, brilliant man. And um, I was doing my little art on the side. Um, I, when I bought the property that became Shakes, my husband was still alive and he was, he always encouraged me. He said, you know, go for it, go for it, you know, build another house. And, and uh, he would encourage me. We, we, we gave each other great encouragement. And um, if our children were brought up in an offhand manner, which I must say they were, it, um, it has paid off <laughs> because they, they have both Justine and Jason are most amazing children. And I put it largely to the fact that um, they were brought up so badly. <laughs> Before the pandemic of COVID-19, Jake's Hotel had books in every room for their guests, and the ambience surely makes this place a perfect spot for those who love reading. Even today we have found this amazing book exchange box just outside of the entrance of Jake's, available for all the community to use. None of this should be surprising if you know that Jake's is the home for the Calabash International Literary Festival. the home of the Calabash Literary Festival, where we host our bi-yearly, so now it's every two years, Calabash Festival, and here's our main stage. The Calabash is a three-day festival of readings, interviews, and open microphone sessions, bringing the storytelling talents together. And when time comes, she appears with black pearl eyes, seaweed locks, and a balm of deep sea poetry for the kin scattered like shells on the beaches of the Caribbean. You need to know what will be said next in this poem. This poem shall disappoint you because this poem is to be continued in your mind, in your mind, in your mind, in your mind, in your mind. In your mind. <laughs> Hold the sword between your teeth. Festival was founded in 2001 by three people, a Jamaican novelist Colin Chenner. And here is the official website where you can learn more about his works. The writer and poet Kwame Dawes, who was born in Ghana, but spent most of his childhood and early adult life in Jamaica. And of course, the producer and filmmaker Justine Hansel, the daughter of Perry and Sally Hansel. If you don't have a good story, well written, you could have the best camera in the world, you could have all the money in the world, you're still gonna end up with something that's not worth watching. The aim of Calabash Festival was simple, to create a world-class literary festival with roots in Jamaica and branches reaching out into the wider world. All of these years, the festival has been hosted at Jake's in Treasure Beach and brought international attention to this part of Jamaica. But what's even more important, it has provided the platform for gifted people from Jamaica and from all over the world. I was lucky to visit the festival only once so far, but I hope I will be able to make a full story about it later. I've heard that because of Jake's, a lot changed in Treasure Beach community. And did you have that in mind when you were building it? or No, I, I cannot say that I had in mind involving the whole community. And that I have to give the total praise to my son, Jason, who is very community minded. It was his idea to start the sports park, which is 17 acres, 
and now has about five football fields, two tennis courts, basketball, playground for the children, dolly house for the children. And then, and then we have encouraged the local farmers to go organic and some of them have complied. Oh yes, we're all about using produce from the area. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I grew up with these families and they, they, they know me and I know them for forever. So it's very much um, about looking out for each other. It's very much about lifting everyone up and the whole concept of, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. So if my neighbor is stronger, I'm stronger. Um, and that sentiment um, meant a lot to us when we started our nonprofit organization. We work with the schools, we work with the sports at our sports park, we work with conservation, with the Galleon Beach Fishing Tournament, Fishing Sanctuary. We made a pledge with the community, pretty much. We have a lot of aspirational quotes from different leaders from around the world with us positive messages. So we wanted to create a safe environment that nurtured talent. And I think that's what we've, we've done, definitely built it with the community, for the community. As we were driving in Treasure Beach, I kept seeing the signs about sustainable tourism and just had to stop by this fish for plastic recycling that I haven't seen in other parts of Jamaica yet. I thought it was quite fun, considering that Treasure Beach has been known as the fishing village. However, so many things have changed from 1990s when people had to travel from Treasure Beach to nearby Black River Town for 30 minutes just to make a phone call. Now Treasure Beach is much easier to access even from the north coast. Yes, there are still a few bumpy roads on the way, but there is also a new highway opened only a few years ago, which makes things much easier. One of the complaints I heard from tourists is that there is nothing to do in Treasure Beach community, so no point going there which of course cannot be further from the truth because Treasure Beach is the perfect location to explore South Coast. And let me mention just a few things there. South Coast is home for Black River Safari to see crocodiles and Black River Town as a whole, which is a historical place. How about YS Falls, the biggest waterfalls in Jamaica hiding in the rainforest? Appleton Rum Estate offers the best historical excursion of a rum factory. Or just take a picturesque drive through Bamboo Avenue and then make a stop at Middle Quarters to try out authentic Jamaican pepper shrimp. The world-famous Pelican Bar is nearby as well, only a short boat ride away. And of course Lava's Leap restaurant with breathtaking views. These are a few things to do and I already have videos covering some of these places. Feel free to check them out. But I personally think the biggest treasure is the atmosphere. There is this very special vibe in Treasure Beach which is impossible to explain or show. You just need to go there and feel it. When Jamaica became independent from 1960s, a lot of Jamaicans left the island in search of opportunities in other countries. The Hansel family not only stayed, but they also saw the potential in Jamaica's south coast. Back in the day, land there didn't cost much, but Jamaican banks were not really interested in giving anyone a loan to buy land because it was viewed as of low value. Well, now south coast has the infrastructure and offers unique experience to foreigners and locals alike. But what's more important, because of the development that took place, the value of land in areas like Treasure Beach increased significantly. This benefited the whole community and Jake's and the family behind it were some of the large contributors to this. So I'm happy to share with you, if not the full story of Jake's, at least a part of it. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this episode, don't forget to give it a like. Big thanks to now 74 patrons, especially top tier patrons for all of your continued support. If you're not a patron yet, but you would like to join our team of supporters, you can do so from only five US dollars per month. Thank you once again. My name is Irina and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. What do you love Jamaica for? The people. If for, for one split second, we had thought of leaving and I said, imagine waking up in the morning and opening the door and the people outside aren't Jamaicans. I mean, 
No, it can't work. <laughs>